kind of feels like you're in a plane looking down, but just at a much faster scale. When you suit up, typically you need a second person with you. They help you get in and out of it. Typically it takes a while to get in and out. So here's the cupola. So this is like a little uh, lookout window. Sounds pretty accurate to me. Hi, I'm Jerry Hudak, I'm an aerospace engineer. And I'm Colin Smith, also an aerospace engineer. And uh, we're gonna check out Mission ISS. We have this headset. Gotta figure out who goes first. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. There we go. Don't eat a ton of food before you play this. This is pretty cool. Oh, I'm just like laying on the ground. Oh, oh look, I got a little iPad. I'm not sure what any of this is doing. Go this way. Oh, all right, I can turn. Oh, uh, Bob Bankin. He actually just went to the space station. The, the layout is super realistic from many pictures that I've seen of it. I mean, I think they recreated it pretty well, but definitely like it's very disorienting. Of There's no real up or down. It's just kind of all around and everything looks very similar. I'm not actually sure where I'm supposed to go is the other thing on this, or like what the mission of this is. But yeah, I mean, this feels very realistic. Oh, this is what they wanted me to look at, right? The, the glove box. When you suit up, typically you need a second person with you. Um, they help you get in and out of it. Typically it takes a while to get in and out just because it's so bulky in, in space to be able to hold on to everything and like pull on all these different layers. Where are we? <clears throat> you see all these like ventilation, I think these are ventilation lines. Base station is also pretty noisy from all the fans that have to be on and all the machinery that runs. Um, so they have to try to keep it, uh, they try to dampen it as much as possible, but it's still pretty loud. On the Russian side, they don't monitor that as much, so sometimes you'll see astronauts with earplugs in, and that's just because it's just it's just noisy on the space station. Also, it looks like there's like little particles floating, so that's one of the main things of visiting spacecraft when they come to visit. You want to make sure that they don't contaminate the space station. Any particulate that's on the ground has to be cleaner than normal because it, when you get to space, it just floats, and that actually can be a real pain to get it in your eye. And this cargo, they're in these bags, and then they just get bungee strapped down. So here's the cupola. So this is like a little uh, lookout window. Yeah, just look out into space, so they can sit here. Also, this lets them look for when visiting spacecraft come in. They'll look from here, there we go, and there's the Canadarm, and that's where like they'll look here and they'll grab a ship, and actually you can see prongs right there, that's where they, they use the arm and grab it and they can manipulate modules outside. So not only is it a cool place to get a view, but also very useful for them to look outside and then they use these controls here. They use these controls here to operate uh, the arm outside the vehicle. It's just cargo, so there's just cargo in bags and they just put them behind bungee straps. So these might be food or other supplies that they have. So the thing is that NASA has like rectangular bags like this and the Russians have just like garbage bag style ones. When you put them in the square in the square bags, they can like bounce around a little bit. And in the Russian ones, since it's in this like dampened bag, you put it in and it kind of like stays in. So it's a little bit easier to put in like multiple things. But obviously when you pack it, it's a little bit, a little bit tougher. This is the bathroom, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I don't want to get too close to this. Um, these are where you put your feet to hold you down, get some leverage. That's if you have to go number one. Um, when they practice, they actually use a, they have a little screen, a little display screen and a camera. And so on Earth, they practice to make sure they can hit the target in space. And then this looks like where they eat meals. So a lot of the meals come up in, in these pouches. It's just easier to pack and they just like squeeze them out. And actually uh, up in space, more area isn't better. As you can see, like they like the smaller area ones because you can get caught in this dead space in between where you can't grab anything to, to push off on. So any of like the bigger modules are kind of tough because you could just get stuck right in the middle. And as you can also see all these like cables just kind of float naturally. So they have to do like, they have to tie things down if they're not gonna be used. So this is the Japanese module. This is the one I think is a little bit bigger and I think might be tough to like move around in. I think it has a little bit more area. Oh, well, uh, I don't think you can um, shake the space station like that. The food, from what I've heard, is pretty normal. They have a lot of foods that they have on Earth, just not as fresh. So a lot of times when visiting spacecraft come up, they will bring them fresh treats, uh, like fresh fruit or like ice cream, sometimes like a little surprise of what they get. So they like when visiting craft uh, come visit, they get to open it up. It's like opening a, a present. The RMS is attached to a platform called the Mobile Base System, or MBS. The translational joystick can move straight in any direction, in and out, left and right, up and down. Use the translational joystick on the left and the rotational joystick on the right to bring the arm into position. As long as you proceed slowly, things should be fine.
So I'm just trying to figure out what each of these controls does. I'm trying to get it away from me right now and it's there's a lot of like coordinated movement. This is the Canadarm 2 product of the great nation of Canada. So what it's used for is both grabbing, visiting spacecraft that don't dock. So there's a difference between some spacecraft dock and some berth. Vehicles that berth, they get close like this vehicle here. They use the Canadarm to grab them and bring them in. Vehicles that dock come straight in and they can handle connecting to the space station on their own. So on this vehicle, there's a trunk, which is that bottom part with the solar panels. It's used to get unpressurized cargo out of that area. So you think of like in your car, it's cargo that you may not care about as much in terms of like environmental controls, but a little bit bigger. And so you stick it in the trunk on a pallet and then they use this to swing under there and grab it. So the second iteration of this capsule is more automated and, and does dock. So this first one births, and it's just to make sure that it gets it exact um, and to, to correct for any, any like perturbations as it's uh, getting closer. We're both moving at 17,500 miles an hour. And so, um, well, it looks like there's these small adjustments. So now I'm trying to use one of the cameras to, to steer instead of these visual ones, because I both can't see where mine is. That might be a little bit easier. Yeah, it seems to work a little bit better looking at this center. Looks like you're getting a little too close there, ISS. Uh, Check your monitors. Um, those little holes on the side are uh, in-space thrusters that are helping right now to station keep to keep the vehicle in that position. If you look, they're kind of offset, like one on one pointing one way and one the other, so they can make sure that they don't, uh, you know, put the vehicle into a spin and can offset any any reaction by the other one. All right. Capsule lock is confirmed. Oh yeah. The next step is to move the capsule into position at the ISS hatch. The ship will latch onto the station automatically. A PCBM, which is a passive common berthing mechanism, and the thing that I'm trying to connect there with those those little tabs is a, an active common berthing mechanism. They'll interlock. NASA tells you what vehicle visiting vehicle side should look like so that it can just be accepted by this. And then once they get together, what will happen is it will get bolted down. It'll draw it in, actually get locked pressure. I think I have to rotate this. The area that's in between right now, there's like a gap, right, between the capsule and the space station with a little airlock. So they'll, what they'll do is they'll pressurize that cavity. The visiting vehicle has a, a passive common berthing mechanism on the top that is the negative of this yellow and green um, active common berthing mechanism. We're using the arm to put the passive side into the active side. NASA basically just as, makes sure that, just like a common interface, just has like visiting vehicles have that on it. So they'll they'll draw it in and then once it's close enough they'll get it close and they'll have a uh, capture lock and it will then it'll get it'll get bolted down so there's a bunch of bolts see those bolts there's a bolt hole ring around it it'll get kind of bolted together so it's in place but there's still a gap of vacuum right of unpressurized space and so you need to fill that to be able to open the hatch and so they'll pressurize that with about 14.7 psi so the space station the habitable atmospheric pressure is between like 14.0 and 14.9 psi they normally keep it around i mean on earth it's 14.7 is atmospheric pressure so just pretty similar to what you and i are used to on the ground but you have to fill that gap in between so that you can open it um, likewise whenever you go to leave you need to make sure to vent that otherwise once you would open this it would pop the capsule off the end i need to go up there's a lot of movement and I'm just trying to get into some movements that like complex movements that look good and then continue on that until that works. So now I think I just need to bring it, I think I need to get over a little bit. I don't know how to translate. I think this is translational. So, and then bring it back. I think I need to get over a little more. I'm also not sure how sensitive the game is on like how close you have to be. And if you miss, right, you just ram it, just ram into a very, very expensive piece of equipment. Yeah, there are a few Canadian astronauts. So Chris Hadfield is one of the more famous ones who played, um, he made like a music video in space. I think I'm just gonna go straight in now. And I think I should be, should be good. This process to get to the space station takes a long time. So they basically play a game of uh, red light, green light on the way. So you go to these, stopping points and you know they say like okay are we still good to proceed and then you wait there and they're like okay come on further and then they're like all right red light and then they're like okay hang out here and then they say okay green light come to like 50 meters and then you go up there and you wait like an hour and they check out everything and you slowly get closer and closer so it's a pretty long process to get actually to this point where they grab you and then they carefully do this docking maneuver hopefully i don't have to be rotated appropriately like it says, please don't jeopardize a 100 million dollar supply mission 
and this this guy is not helping. There we go. There we go. Right. I think I'm already outside the space station. I can see the edges of my helmet. This is cool. This, it kind of feels like you're in a plane looking down, but just at a much faster scale. When you hit the thrusters, you can hear the little bang bang. Sounds pretty accurate to me. Also, the sun is super bright, kind of like on Earth. Don't want to look directly into the sun, but if you're outside of the station like this, you're basically floating in a vacuum and microgravity. And if there are no molecules in this vacuum, you could not basically transfer sound waves. The vibrations don't have anything to vibrate through. So theoretically, if you had somebody else out here listening, they should not really be able to hear gonna fall, which I guess I am technically falling. Yeah, you can see the modules from the outside. And you can see, I saw, yeah, there's a visiting vehicle over there with its solar panels deployed. Oh, uh-oh. Yeah, I can see how this could be <laughs> really scary. You can see how there's handholds here. This is on purpose. There's a ton of handholds everywhere, and that's how it was designed because most of the time, you're not just floating around with your thrusters. Most of the time, you are kind of grabbing things, climbing, moving around with these handholds. So now, before when I was looking down, and I felt like I was gonna fall into the ocean or something, and that was a weird feeling. Now I feel like I'm gonna fall into the blackness of space. And that is an even weirder feeling, but it's pretty cool. So I think the game is kind of slowing me down on purpose. So I, don't think, I think it's trapping me in the bubble. There's some like controls out here. I can't mess with it. It says EV2, so I must be in the second suit. So this has got to be one of the best days if you're an astronaut when you go do an EV. And I don't think you would actually grab on to some of the stuff out here, but that's the benefit of being in a game. So we just finished mission ISS, and you might be able to tell they're a little oh, VR. Yeah. Do I have Marks, you have some. Oh, yeah. I thought it was super fun. What did you think? Definitely took a little getting used to, as I'm sure space probably is. Yeah, once you get used to it, then definitely, definitely really good. I thought it was very realistic. They did as good of a job as they could to make it fun and playable, but also match what it would actually be like to be on the SS. It's kind of awesome that you can play a VR game like this and get this experience that only a few people have had. And that's how it's done. Hi, I'm Jerry. Oh, not hi. We already said hi. We already Bye. 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 Bye.